Our closing speech will be delivered by Mr. Larry Bates. In addition to Larry's many titles at Panasonic, he was an ACCJ president, and he has also been a core member of LAN, and a true inspiration and instigation behind the viewpoint for marriage equality. Having a virtual gala has its benefits. We can finally have this momentous opportunity to hear from Larry. Good evening, everybody. At least good evening for those of you who are watching from Japan. I'm very honored uh, to be able to participate in tonight's first virtual annual event uh, of the uh, LGBT Lawyers and Allies Network. Um, and to celebrate, I think, a very important milestone uh, in reaching 100 institutional endorsements of the uh, so-called ACCJ viewpoint on marriage equality which LAN was very instrumental uh, in developing and I think announced uh, two years ago uh, at this event. Um, it was two and a half years ago in February, I remember very clearly, when I was sitting down with Alexander Demetrenko over lunch and we were brainstorming uh, how we could widen this advocacy effort for marriage equality in Japan and we realized that there was really missing in the whole discussion uh, a set of powerful business arguments and business voices on why marriage equality for LGBT people uh, would be so important. Um, and with that, we started a discussion at, with the American Chamber of Commerce in Japan, where I had been president uh, several years ago, uh, to uh, develop a so-called viewpoint, a paper, uh, arguing the business reasons for the Japanese government and Japanese society as to why this would be beneficial for the economy of Japan and for businesses that are operating uh, in Japan. And the business arguments uh, that we developed uh, were those that include, of course, the fundamental concept of fairness. Uh, businesses care about that uh, and their opportunities for their employees as much as the rest of us. Um, but also the fact that Japan was a bit of an outlier and still is within the G7 uh, group of countries as not recognizing these types of rights uh, for family relationships. Uh, and then, of course, there were all the legal arguments that the human resources uh, function have to deal with uh, in various companies uh, related to immigration, of uh, partners, uh, taxation, uh, health care, and so forth. And those uh, arguments laid out on paper were powerful enough, but really the most important uh, point that I think that the viewpoint makes and that I feel very personally in my own life is this question of workplace productivity and how do we really uh, bring out the best in our people no matter what their background, including um, whatever their LGBT orientation might be or not. It's not going to be helpful for businesses if people are hiding who they are in the workplace and cannot be uh, effective uh, in their roles. You know, this reminds me of an event I attended just uh, a couple of months ago and spoke on a panel with Panasonic, uh, my company, um, initiative called ABW, A Better uh, Work Style, uh, to emphasize uh, the importance of diversity in, and inclusion in a transforming uh, company, Japanese company, uh, like my own. And this event was focused on uh, LGBT uh, DNI, and and some of the comments that we received in the survey that was taken afterwards from many of the participants who listened virtually, were that they were very pleased that they could uh, participate from personal email addresses because they did not yet feel comfortable coming out directly in the organization. Didn't want to use a company email address. You know, this reminded me, and I, I mean, I, I, we always had to give this option to people, um, but this reminded me of my own coming out story uh, from many years back and living in Japan as I have for 30 years. And it was really only 10 to 12 years ago that I started to feel comfortable enough in my then work environment uh, to be honest about who I was. And as I started to come out to more people uh, and about my husband, Paul, who I've been with for this entire 30 years, um, my two young children who came after that, uh, I realized that I was actually becoming more convincing as a leader, becoming more effective uh, in my role. 
And, you know, I realized that this could have been much easier for me, and it could have been much easier for these people who I know in my own current company who said that they didn't feel comfortable coming out yet in the workplace. Uh, it would have been much easier if we were not treated uh, any differently from families uh, that we see all across society who can be completely open about their relationships and their family structures. Uh, and that marriage equality um, brings with it not just a whole host of legal rights, uh, but also very importantly, um, a sense of self, a sense of belonging, such that none of us feels that there's a, 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 an inferiority or a second-class citizen status uh, to our situations. And if we can overcome that uh, together, uh, then we all can be more effective in whatever organizations we work in and as members uh, of society. So I'm very, very excited, actually, that my own company, Panasonic, has now become uh, either the 99th or 100th, or is about to become the 99th or 100th endorser, formally, uh, of this viewpoint. Um, we still have just so much work to do. Um, you know, it's already been two and a half years of effort, two years since this viewpoint came out. Um, I think now the time and it's, it is for all of us uh, to use these resources, these endorsements, the resources of our organizations uh, to really move to the next level and convince uh, society as a whole uh, to make this legal change which we called for in this viewpoint and which is a right uh, that people have in many countries across the world, uh, not just within the other uh, G7 countries. So thank you uh, for listening to me. Um, this is, is, is again, uh, something I'm very, very deeply committed to and I urge all of you uh, to please let's work together uh, to make this uh, really happen. Thank you.